There's a pretty one, Ulysses. Well, good morning, Booktube. I'm Sean the Book Maniac. Welcome back to my channel. Here I am with another Friday Reads, al fresco style. It's still it's the tail end of the rainy season, and today it's calling for 80% chance of rain off and on all day, but I think I'll be okay. I brought my umbrella and bags to wrap my microphone and my, my precious books in if I happen to get caught, but let's just go with it. That doesn't mean I'm going to be brief. <laughs> I have a lot to say, and I'll start with some anecdotes about how much machines are not my friend. So uh, let me show you. This is uh, my pocket Wi-Fi and I'm showing you the back of it because uh, I've had this one. I've, I've had pocket Wi-Fi for about five years or more and replaced, traded in my old one for the new one and about a year and a half ago dropped it once. And look at that. Cracked it all to shit. It still works. But I have Apple products, and say what you like about Apple. I've dropped my iPhone and my iPad a thousand times, never so much as a crack, and this one just shattered. It's not Apple, obviously. But it still works. I can't read the screen. Couldn't read the Japanese anyway, but now there's it's half the screen is all blacked out. So the other day, Wednesday, I was on my way to work and I powered up my pocket Wi-Fi and it showed that, that that it was active but nothing was happening I couldn't use the internet I couldn't listen to my audiobooks <laughs> just like, what's going on and I thought did I pay my bill because sometimes that's happened and yes I paid I'm paid up uh, maybe the system's down I hope the system's down because I don't want to buy this I think a new one of these is 300 bucks I don't know if it's covered on any kind of a warranty but you know $300 is not something I have in my pocket right now thanks to Eric Carl Anderson and all his book haul videos. <laughs> so there was a message scrolling and thank God it was scrolling because it the entire message was visible and readable to a Japanese speaker uh, in the little section that still worked on the display. So I showed it to one of my students and she informed me that all I was all I needed to do was pop out the SIM card and put it back in and it everything went back to back to functionality so that was at a happy ending because I thought if I'm without if I'm without pocket Wi-Fi I will be exponentially less likely to leave my house and it's already kind of a problem and then much more briefly I uh, have a bad back and I have very comfortable furniture because of that I have an electric recliner sofa and I do all of my reading and everything, sometimes even sleeping, in that recliner chair. And yesterday morning, after leaving a animated Voxer message for Britta, I pushed the down button to position it into a normal seat. It stopped, it didn't work. And sometimes the plug comes out, so no, I checked back, blah, 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 blah. The opposite side recliner still worked. So what I discovered when I moved it out from the wall and look at all that dirt and all those bookmarks and crap back there was that somehow the cord for my side of the sofa had gotten under the sofa base the metal base and it had eventually severed it so I'm gonna have to get something repaired or replaced and I hope it's not gonna be so expensive but in the meantime that chair of my double recliner chair sofa is up here's a picture and I, we're having a little house party tomorrow night and it's up it looks so stupid it's so I'm now sitting on the opposite side which I never sit on and Kenji being Japanese is a floor sitter so the other side of the sofa th that other chair is much more plush and soft because I haven't been sitting on it still everything's reverse being right-handed everything's on the wrong side because I do all my video editing and stuff now sitting in that chair everything 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 all right so let's get to the book shall we <sighs> I've had a really good reading week. My reading slump is officially over. Doesn't mean that everything that happened this week in my bibliomanic life has been great, but I'm back in business. I've only finished one book and I can't talk about it, so I'll just show it to you quickly. I've, for the Book 2 Prize judging, I have finished Aminata Forna's Happiness 
More on that. Oh, look at that. Uh, more on that at the end of this month when the BookTube Prize judging for the semifinals period, the embargo will be li has been lifted. I have bailed on two. Uh, the On Passing by Chia Chia Lin didn't end up working for me. Uh, two reasons, and I, I'm not able to sort out in my mind which one was pr the primary reason, but I didn't end up liking the audio narration, and that's the problem with audiobooks. There are a lot of voices that I like at first and then quickly tire of, and that's what happened with this guy. But the other thing was, it was just about the children, and we saw a little bit of their parents through their eyes, but it was one of those that was so tightly restrained to how the children, the main character seemed to be about 10, so tightly restricted to his perspective on the world. And I scanned ahead and read some reviews and apparently it never gets out of that. And that is not a Sean book. I don't, I'm not that interested in children. I like children, but they're pictures. <laughs> oh, I love children, but I don't want to be so confined in their perspective for the entire novel. No, not unless there's something really dark going on or something else that's keeping me going. But this was get this got very tiresome very quickly. So I read uh, a, a quarter of it and bailed. The writing was really nice. I've also bailed on Daisy Johnson's Everything Under. Boy, my uh, books are matching my shirt today. Yeah, I didn't like it. Uh, I, again, it's a fairy tale or a myth retelling. It felt fairy tale-esque, and it was obviously playing around with the Oedipus myth, and as soon as it got into that territory, I started to hate it very quickly, very abruptly. I bailed very abruptly on the Jacqueline of Six Minutes for Me. I thought it opened quite powerfully with a very uh, unstereotypical mother-daughter relationship, and the mother had abandoned the daughter when she was a teenager, but the, the daughter finds her w many years later and the mother's starting to suffer from some kind of dementia, presumably Alzheimer's, but I, I don't know. And that was I thought, quite sensitively portrayed, but then it veered off into all these things that just like all the other retelling books, I feel like the story gets distorted in the most uninteresting ways to shoehorn a myth or something in it. <laughs> I felt the same way with the Women's Prize winner, what was it called? The uh, Pakistani British novelist. I'll, I'll put that book up there. I know uh, I've had uh, big disagreements with readers who I respect because I thought that was an awful book as well. And this one similarly. So, no, I'm out of here. I read 40% of it and that was more than enough. So those were my bales and probably the most exciting is what I've started. Yeah, I got some good stuff to tell you about. I can't say much about this, but I have started a quick AMSE's Freshwater. This is for the Book 2 Prize judging. I read it last year, early last year. It was a top, one of my top reads. So my opinions about it are well known. I believe that I owe the Book 2 Prize judging process a reread on this to assess it uh, alongside the other ones. And I am doing it as an audio text combo. The audiobook is narrated by the author and they do a fabulous job narrating it. So I'm doing that, so that's in progress. What I'm most excited to tell you about, and I know this is very tentative, I need to develop some little video snippet, some little sound effect to remind you all that just because I'm loving a book at the beginning doesn't mean things aren't gonna go south uh, by next week. And I've had many predictions about this book, but I say poo to all that. I am completely and utterly bewitched by Milkman by Hannah Burns. Oh, it is so much a Sean book so far. I am, I think, partway into chapter three. This is a buddy read with Ange of Beyond the Pages. And I am underlining fiendishly and just gasping at how, how quirkily and brilliantly she is tugging me into this novel. So uh, I think I don't need to say much more. This book has been talked about to death. You know, there's lots of chance for things to go wrong. And so, yeah, yeah, I know you think I'm going to bail. You think I'm not going to like it later. This is just gobsmackingly powerful. I love the writing. I love the way the characters are being sketched, uh, not sketched, they're being uh, 
revealed on the page in such a weird way. The language, the absence of names. I think everybody should adopt that policy. No more names in novels, people. I can't remember names. So yeah, this is fabulous. So far, oh my God. Imagine the booker getting it right for a change. And the last two couldn't be more different from each other. After I abandoned the audiobook, I was scrolling through my scribbed list of audiobooks that I wanted to check out, and I tried a few and didn't like them or they didn't seem to fit the mood I was in. And then I previewed The Pisces by Melissa Broder, and I freaking love it! It's so good. It's not my typical fare. It's very sarcastic and bitchy. It's obviously a satire. I find it uproariously funny, but what's keeping me going, because that doesn't get me very far with a novel, is that I also feel an emotional undertow to it that is delightful. So I don't know anything about her. Apparently she's a Twitter phenomenon or something. She's done something on social media. I don't care about any of that. I'll look into it later. But And she narrates the audiobook and she has the weirdest intonation that I love. And again, 20% in, I do get tired of audio narrators, but I think a lot of people, the audio, her voice might drive them crazy. She's got this rising, na 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 Almost every sentence is like that, and I love it. She, there's so much personality in her intonation. Yeah, it's, I think some of you are, will, are probably surprised to hear that I'm absolutely loving the Pisces. I'm doing that one exclusively on audio. And then the last one, again, the very, very different. This is a Blame It On Amy of From the Dusty Bookshelf. Last, her last Friday read, she talked about reading. She's on a J.M. Barry kick. And last week she was planning to start, or had just started, Barry's memoir about his mother. And the title is her, his mother's name, Margaret Ogilvie. And I checked on Scribd, and I have a like 5,000 page ebook, the collected works, the complete works of J.M. Barry. So I found that memoir. It's 125 pages on, in ebook. So I started it the other day, and I quite like it. Barry, as we all know, Scottish novelist. Uh, oh, he was an old man when he died in 1937. He was about 93. I don't know exactly when this was written, but uh, much of the story, the story must happen in the in the middle to, mid to late uh, 19th century. Oh, no, he was... No, I can't do math. I just... He was 77 when he died. He was born in 1860, died in 1937. Note to self, bring calculator to your next Friday reads. <laughs> anyway, and I finding it quite charming and entertaining and poignant. One of his brothers died when he himself was young and his mother never really recovered and Barry would wear his dead brother's clothes to try to get his mother to get out of bed and try to make her laugh. That's the part that I love the best so far, the, the, where she's, he's trying to make her laugh and it successfully, but it's really, it still carries a lot of poignancy all these years later. People speculate that the boy who never grew up, Peter Pan, comes from this part of his life. So those are the books that I have started. Oh, okay, so in terms of the coming week, I didn't check my buddy reading schedule, so I'm now reminding myself that I do have a really much anticipated buddy read beginning on Monday. I didn't bring that book, so I'll put the, the gif in here. It's a Welsh novel, Turf or Stone, by Margaret Evans. And this is a buddy read with Charlotte of Tired Mama Tries to Read, Shawnee of Shawnee Reads, and and beyond the pages and charlotte and i buddy read margaret evans's most well-known novel country dance about six months ago and i it was a reread for charlotte but Ange and i just loved it i'll put the link to our joint review in the show notes and this is another novel by evans and charlotte hasn't read this one yet so i'm really looking forward to it's a little bit longer 200 pages maybe and uh, really excited about that so that's monday and then the only other book that I know that I will be starting for sure 
is another one for the booktube prize. I hope to finish up the two that I'm reading now and then immediately start Fatima Farheen Mirza's A Place for Us. And uh, it's a chunkster, so I want to get started on it next week. And also uh, Tyari Jones's American Marriage, also for the booktube prize judging. So that was a bail for me last year. But again, I feel I owe it to the judging process to pick it up again, try it, and not bail. So those two. I hope to start next week. All right. So uh, shouting out some stuff, maybe stuff that's not on BookTube. My friend Jenny has a podcast, Reading Envy, that I have shouted out many times. And her guest last week was another dear friend of mine from Canada, Lindy, who's not on BookTube. And she talks in that episode about three books from her hometown, Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. Two books of poetry and one collection of essays or something. I actually haven't finished listening to the episode, but I've listened to three quarters of it. Uh, I love listening to Lindy talk about any book. She could talk about the phone book and make it sound interesting. And she is a voracious reader. She's such a perceptive observer of language. So I really recommend this episode. Jenny is always that way too. So th those two really connect well. So check that out. I'll put a link in the show notes. And uh, did you see Eric Carl Anderson's tweet yesterday? I will put it up on the screen. Uh, he was reading a book. It didn't necessarily sound like a book that I would like, but maybe. I don't remember him talking about it on his channel, but I'm sure he will be coming up. But uh, I did love this particular tweet in especially. An Honest Man by Ben Ferguson, double S on Ferguson. He was reading it, his novel, An Honest Man, and he uh, was so gripped by it that he missed his train stop. And that's happened to me once or twice, but here's the tweet. What else do I want to shout out? Not booktube videos this week. Different stuff. There's a new Lydia Davis story in The New Yorker. I love Lydia Davis. I'll put a, I haven't read it yet. I'll put a link in the show notes. Dean Street Press has another woman's novel from probably the 1940s or 50s. I haven't looked into it too closely, but they, they're, they call it off print, their, uh, their line, for old middle brow. The novels are so gorgeous looking. So here's a, the cover and I'll put a link to something about this new release. It's already on my TBR. Uh, two writers that I really love, Jhumpa Lahiri and Harry Kunzru, have a reflection on the immigration crisis, the crime against humanity of the concentration camps in Litab. Put a link to that. And uh, this one, that's not really funny, but you try to tell somebody this story and not crack a smile. A teacher in Russia murdered his friend when they were arguing about which is better, poetry or prose, and he killed the guy. I don't know who's, which side the other, the, the victim was on there, but oh my God. Oh yes, and finally, Booktube's own Jacqueline of Six Minutes for Me was featured, interviewed and featured in the online article in Australia about how social media can enhance your reading life. It's a fabulous article uh, and uh, featuring a fabulous booktuber, so I'll put that link in the show notes. All right, that's all I got. Uh, I've had a great reading week. Oh, and uh, recently I've been forgetting to ask you directly how your reading week's going, but that's uh, always, even if it's not voiced, it's all, even if it's not, if I forget to mention it, it's still a question that I'm always interested in. So I hope you've had a great reading week. Tell me all about it. Thanks for watching. Oh.